bank does use to influence the money supply is the repurchase rate, commonly known as the repo rate. To understand how the repo rate affects the money supply, the economy and you and me, we first have to understand how the South African Reserve Bank conducts monetary policy. Monetary policy can be defined as the measures taken by the monetary authorities to influence the quantity of money in the economy or the rate of interest to try to achieve price stability, full employment and economic growth. So, the South African Reserve Bank is the monetary authority in South Africa. If you visit its website, you'll find the quarterly bulletins that we looked at earlier and lots of other information on monetary policy and the monetary sector in general. The website address is www.reservebank.co.za Have a look, not only to help your understanding of economics, but because you'll find information that affects many other aspects of your life. On this website, the bank's mission is stated as follows. The South African Reserve Bank is the central bank of the Republic of South Africa. It regards its primary goal in the South African economic system as the achievement and maintenance of price stability. This is significant. The South African Reserve Bank regards the maintenance of price stability as its most important economic objective and the instrument used to achieve this is the repo rate. So let's look at this more closely. It's through something called accommodation policy that our central bank, the South African Reserve Bank, provides borrowing facilities to the private banking sector. The Reserve Bank relies extensively on its accommodation policy to influence interest rates and to achieve their primary objective, price stability. When private banks need to borrow money to finance their shortfalls or deficits, they do it by borrowing from the central bank. This is done through repurchase agreements between the South African Reserve Bank and the private bank in question. Imagine that an unusually high number of withdrawals overnight have left First Bank with a temporary liquidity problem. The bank needs 300 million rands in cash quickly to meet any more withdrawals. Private banks keep something called securities, financial assets like treasury bills, government bonds and reserve bank debentures. The private bank can raise money at short notice by selling some of these securities to the South African Reserve Bank. This type of deal is called a repurchase agreement and it usually stipulates that First Bank will repurchase or buy back the 300 million rands worth of securities after seven days and they will also have to pay interest for seven days on that amount. It's this interest rate that is known as the repo rate. The determination of this repo rate is extremely important, as this is the main instrument that the South African Reserve Bank uses to maintain price stability. The Reserve Bank has confounded economists and market watchers, cutting interest rates by 50 basis points. That means the prime lending rate will drop to 10.5%. It seemed everything was against a rate cut. Soaring electricity prices, double-digit wage increases, even a clear message from outgoing Governor Tito Mboweni that consumers shouldn't get too used to regular rate cuts. So it was a surprise for many when Mboweni pulled a rabbit out of his hat. So how do they determine the repo rate? And in fact, who are they, them, this group of people that has such power? They are the Monetary Policy Committee. The committee consists of eight members, the Governor of the Reserve Bank, three Deputy Governors and four senior officials of the Reserve Bank. They meet six times a year at predetermined dates and at these meetings they carefully consider all the factors that could affect inflation, such as recent and expected national and global events. And after much deliberation, they'll reach a decision to set the repo rate at a certain level. The governor then makes a formal announcement on the repo rate to the media. The MPC has therefore decided to reduce the repurchase rate by 50 basis points. But what is the connection between the repo rate that private banks pay to the central bank for funding and interest rates that we, the public, pay to those banks for our loans. 
Well, usually, the banks will push up their interest rates immediately when the repo rate goes up, and lower them if the repo rate goes down. The process through which the repo rate influences so many other variables in the economy is called the transmission mechanism of monetary policy. When the repo rate goes up, private banks push up their lending rates. So if you want to borrow money, it's going to be more expensive for you to do so. All other interest rates in the economy go up too, so all types of financing become more expensive. Real investment and consumption throughout the economy will be affected by this change in interest rates. Let's look at investment first. When a business is deciding whether or not to expand production, it has to consider whether the additional revenue it might earn outweighs the cost of financing this expansion. A rise in rates means higher financing costs, so some projects will no longer be financially viable. Remember, investment falls when interest rates rise. For similar reasons, consumption spending will also decrease. Higher interest rates on all types of credit means that households are paying more for mortgage loans, credit cards, car repayments and any other debt. So they will have less disposable income to spend on consumption. Now what follows in this chain of events? Well, a drop in both consumption and investment spending means lower demand in the economy. The decrease in demand will make it more difficult for suppliers to keep raising prices. Price increases will start to slow down which, in other words, means a lower inflation rate. Remember, banks create money, or increase the money supply, when they lend money to their customers. It's the demand for money that determines how much money banks can create. 